everybody. I'm Mrs. Garner from Juniata Gap, and we will be doing our math lesson together today. Hello, my Juniata Gap friends. I miss you all so much. I hope that everybody is well and staying safe. All right, for today's lesson, you will need your math notebook or just a piece of paper, um, something that you can record some math problems on for today. So go ahead and gather your materials, and I'm gonna get our screen ready here for our lesson for today. All right, we are ready to get started. Today, boys and girls, we are going to be doing lesson 7.4. We are going to be multiplying fractions by whole numbers. If you paid close attention to Mr. Lawson in yesterday's lesson, or I guess it was Friday's lesson um, now, you'll find that this lesson should be a breeze. It is very similar to what you did on Friday. In your notebook, please put today's date, April 20th, and let's get started. All right, your fluency check for today. I would like you to please write the first five multiples of four and then tell someone at home the definition of a multiple. Go ahead and pause the video and do your fluency check. When you're ready, come on back and hit play. Let's go over your answer. So the first five multiples of four are four, eight, 12, 16, and 20. Hopefully you told somebody at home that a multiple is the product of that number, in this case, the number four, and another number. So if you are finding the multiples of four, it is just the product when you multiply by four. If we look at our first multiple, we get that multiple by doing four times one, which gives you four. The second multiple comes from multiplying four times two, which is eight. The third multiple comes from multiplying four times three, which is 12, and so on. So essentially, multiples are just skip counting by that number. So we can find multiples of whole numbers, but we can also find multiples of fractions. And we're going to be using that concept in today's lesson. Here is our math message for today. One lap around the indoor track at Mill Run Elementary School is one eighth of a mile. Write a multiplication equation <clears throat> to show the total distance Lucas walked when he completed three laps. Go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to answer the math message in your notebook. Let's take a look at your work. The question is asking us to write a multiplication equation. We know we have to multiply because it says it right there in the problem. So now we have to decide what are we going to multiply. Lucas walked three times around the one-eighth mile track. So we have to multiply 1 8th times 3. Now you can also write that as 3 times 1 8th. In yesterday's lesson, you learned that multiplying a fraction by a whole number can also be written as repeated addition. So if we look at that as repeated addition, we could write 1 8th plus 1 8th plus 1 8th, which you already know, boys and girls, is 3 8ths. So to multiply 1 8 times 3, we're just multiplying 1 times 3, and the denominator stays the same. So our answer is 3 8 of a mile. We're going to take a look at our answer of 3 8 and talk about 3 8 as a multiple. The fraction 3 8 is the third multiple of the unit fraction 1 8. A unit fraction is when we're looking at just one piece of the whole. So in a unit fraction, the numerator is always going to be a one. To find the third multiple of one eighth, you would just have to count by eighths three times. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths. So the third multiple of the unit fraction one eighth is three eighths. If we wanted to find the fifth multiple of the unit fraction, 1 8th, 
you'd have to count five times and you would get five eighths. To find the eighth multiple of the unit fraction, one eighth, you would count eight times and the fraction would be eight eighths. So I hope that you can see that there's a pattern there. Whichever multiple you're looking for, whether it be the third, the fifth, the eighth, that number is going to match your numerator. The third multiple of one eighth is three eighths. The fifth multiple of one eighth is five eighths. The eighth multiple of one eighth is eight eighths. So there's a very nice pattern there that can help you to find the multiple of the unit fraction. Okay, looking a little more at multiples of unit fractions, we are going to write each of these fractions as multiples of the unit fraction. So think about what we just discussed on the previous slide. We're going to do the first two together, so I'd like you to follow along. You can write them down in your notebook or on your paper as I do them up on the screen. And then the last two, I'm gonna have you try those independently and then we will go over the answers. All right, let's take a look at 3 tenths. To write 3 tenths as multiples of unit fractions, we're first going to write the unit fraction for 3 tenths. So remember, a unit fraction is when we're looking at just one of those pieces out of the whole. So our unit fraction is 1 tenth. If you think, how many times do you have to count by 1 tenth to get to 3 tenths? You would have to count 3 times. So we would have to multiply 1 tenth times 3. So 3 tenths written as multiples of, of the unit fraction is 1 tenth times 3. Let's take a look at the second example, 5 twelfths. First, write the unit fraction, 1 twelfth. Then think how many times do you have to count by twelfths to get to 5 twelfths. You would have to count 5 times so we're gonna multiply by five. All right, boys and girls, it is your turn to show what you know. Go ahead and pause the video and try the next two questions. Let's see how you did. 11 sixths, to write 11 sixths as multiples of unit fractions, we take 1 sixth and times it by 11. Now, the last one is a little bit tricky because we don't have a fraction, we have a mixed number. We're gonna follow those same steps. One and four fifths. We're gonna first write the unit fraction. Since our denominator in the fraction part is fifths, our unit fraction is one fifth. Now, where this is, is tricky is finding out what to multiply by. We can take this whole number, one, and write it as a fraction. Five fifths is the same as one whole, but we also have four fifths from our fraction. So five fifths and four fifths gives us a total of nine fifths. That's how we take our mixed number and write it as an improper fraction. Because we have to get to nine fifths, we would have to multiply one fifth times nine. 1 and 4 fifth, written as multiples of a unit fraction, is 1 fifth times 9. All right, the next part of our lesson, we are going to be multiplying whole numbers by fractions. So we have a very simple rule that we can use in order to do that. If you take any whole number, and you multiply a whole number by any fraction. All you have to do is multiply the whole number by the numerator and your denominator stays the same. We're gonna use this rule, boys and girls, and do a little bit of practice. One lap around the outdoor track at Lucas's school is 5 eighths of a mile. How far would Lucas walk if he did three laps around the outdoor track. I want you to first try to solve this on your own in your notebook. Think about the rule that we just went over on the previous slide and show your work. Go ahead and pause the video. Let's review the answer. Since Lucas is walking 
three times around the school. To solve the problem, you have to multiply by three. Each time he's walking five eighths of a mile. So we have to multiply three times five eighths. Using our rule that we just learned on the previous slide. Take your whole number and multiply it by the numerator. Your denominator stays the same. Three times five is 15, and then our denominator remains an eight. The answer is 15 eighths. If you have that, that is perfect. Now, 15 eighths is an improper fraction. So I know that many of you have already learned that you can take that improper fraction and change it to a mixed number. If you did that, that is fantastic. That's just one extra step, but the answers are equivalent. So you can either have 15 eighths, or if you changed it, one and seven eighths of a mile is also correct. We can take a look at our answer of 15 eighths, and we can use fraction circles, a picture, or a number line to help us represent that problem. So starting at the top with our blue fraction circles, if we look at that um, picture, how many groups of five eighths are there? There were three groups of five eighths. To show that using multiplication, we would write three times five eighths, which equals 15 eighths. So each of those fraction circles would represent one lap around that outdoor track, which was five eighths of a mile. Another way we can represent that is by using our unit fraction. So if we look at the middle picture, how many groups of our unit fraction one eighth are there? There are 15 groups of one eighth. To write that using multiplication, we would do 15 times one eighth, which equals 15 eighths. So if you're having trouble with the rule of multiplying the whole number by your numerator, and then keeping the denominator the same, you could also use your fraction circles, um, your unit fraction, or a number line to help you solve the problem. Let's do a little bit more practice. We're gonna do this as independent practice. Think about that rule that we learned, pause your video, and answer those three questions on the screen, please. Let's see how you did. Three times four fifths equals 12 fifths. Five times seven twelfths equals 35 twelfths. Four times one and one third equals 16 thirds. So boys and girls, today you learned how to multiply a whole number times a fraction. To do that, our rule is to take your whole number multiply it by the numerator of your fraction. Three times four gives us 12. The denominator stays the same. Pretty simple rule. All right, I ha do have some homework for you to do, and I bet you that you can get this finished before I'm even done with the video. So I have two questions that I would like you to do for homework. Now, if you get a printed packet, you'll see in your packet that these are the first two questions on your extra practice page. So if you have a printed packet, you can just simply do them in your packet. If you're just getting your um, papers from online, there's no need to print them. You can just do it in your notebook or on your paper and then keep a hold of that for tomorrow. In tomorrow's video, we are gonna continue working on multiplying whole numbers times fractions, but we're gonna be looking more at word problems we're gonna start with these two questions tomorrow. So keep them in a safe place so that you can go over them tomorrow. Don't misplace them. Okay, that is it for our lesson today. I hope that you found that that was a pretty simple lesson, multiplying a whole number by a fraction. So first, you're gonna multiply the whole number times the numerator, and then step number two, your denominator stays the same. It's as simple as that, boys and girls. All right, I hope that everybody enjoys the rest of their day with online learning, and I will see you again soon. Bye.